Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, and what a pleasure it is to be speaking with you all once again. Now, we are still living in an uncertain time, so Janicki has left me with one request, no doom and gloom. I was, of course, very pleased with that. However, it can be hard not to give in to doom and gloom, to go with the flow of society and sit with our anxieties. I would not be a truthful person if I told you that I haven't. Seeking out verses to meditate on, I was often struck by way too many that seemed almost trite or simplistic. I thought long and hard about including the verse from Philippians this week. It just didn't seem weighty enough. But the Holy Spirit pushed on, and I am not one to say no to it. Now. That is not where I wish to begin today's sermon, though. Instead, I want to discuss anxiety in general. This is something that many of us struggle with in some form or another, be it something acute we are actively worried about, or something more intangible like the future. And at the moment, many of us are in the intangible stages. But we can certainly see the tangibles all around us in the era of COVID. The question what normal will look like come the end of this summer season is one we are all anxious about, no matter how. Now this is why I have asked you to read all of Matthew 9, if you are able. I used the message, but whatever translation you have should hopefully bring similar results. The opening little header brought me the most attention. Who needs a doctor? This old chapter discusses who needs a doctor in one way or another, and I think it is very pertinent that we are in a time that we are celebrating doctors. But it is in verses 23 to 25 of Matthew 9 that I think the spirit of our time comes about. Here we find Jesus entering the home of one of the local religious leaders or town officials, depending on your translation. And it sounds just like any other funeral we might attend. People are bringing food, chatting, and even gossiping, but all to pay respects to the leader's dead daughter. When Jesus says she is just sleeping, everyone else knows better. In some translations, they laugh at him. In others, they decry him. Yet with just a touch, she gets up and walks around. In a way, we are all at that funeral right now just waiting. One old way of life has passed, and our leaders are trying to put it to rest or resurrect it. We as a society are all just waiting, watching, listening. When experts come along, it can be so easy to dismiss them too. After all, this started out so isolated, didn't it? And what did our experts do then? Yet when it comes to what is right, so far they have not failed us. In fact, many of them did warn us about COVID, about how it could travel fast. Right now, experts and you and I all have to ask what the right thing is when it comes to the future. Because much like the girl in Matthew 9, our society is going to come back to life. We have jobs, appointments, school, fun activities, but all of them are changed. School is something many of us have on our minds especially. After all, be it a daycare or a university, the people present are exposed to each other in close quarters. Children, teachers, support staff, and finally parents and family are all at risk. At the moment, the debate rages whether we should reopen schools at all. Here's where Philippians comes into our story this week. I hope you can pause this wherever you are, be it listening or reading, and give the verse a read. It says, Rejoice in the Lord, do not be anxious, but go towards prayer and petition. Perhaps you can see why I questioned using this verse. But, 
I think it speaks a truth that is hard to take in times like this. God asks us to come to him in our times of trouble and with our concerns. In times like this, just as much as any other, and so with our anxiety about the future too. We are asked to lay our prayers at God's feet, which can seem foolish, but prayer is like baptism and gospel. It changes us, it readies us, and it offers us peace beyond understanding. Again, I understand that perhaps this sounds foolish, but it offers us the chance to reflect and think on our worries. It lets us think about those anxieties and how best to deal with them. More importantly, it puts those anxieties in better hands than ours. It also speaks of petitions, something we can do in the secular world when we have worries and wish for our leaders to hear them. Matthew 9 is full of petitions, after all, and the final part of the chapter seems to call out. And I do like the heading in the message version, as it says, Become what you believe. Then, when the blind men seek healing, Jesus asks them, do you truly, I believe, I can do this? I took that bit a little personally, and I hope we all do too. Do we truly believe that our faith can do this? That God is big enough to shepherd us through these times? To heal our whole society? Deep down, all our spirits say yes. But what do we say? We ought to be what we believe, shouldn't we? Times are hard right now, and the scriptures are full of hard times and the promise that they shall pass. I firmly believe that we will come through this together and better, that our leaders will continue to make the right choices in the face of our changing world, and finally, that our society shall awaken to a new normal, just as the girl in Matthew 9 did. Jesus ends Matthew 9 seeing a world full of aimless people, but a big harvest. He comments that the workers are few, and brothers and sisters, we are those workers these days, even those of us who are not frontline workers. We are asked to become what we believe people of hope, people of faith, people who know that no matter the outcome, all the world is in God's hands. Right now, it can seem we have very little to do, but prayer is a powerful thing. Remember, it is prayer that changes us. Let us take our anxieties and worries and lay them at the feet of God. Let us let those prayers change us so that we might have faith like the blind men, like the town official, like Paul. It is in this way we put our trust in the Lord and say, Amen. Go in peace this week, brothers and sisters, and feel the love of God with you always.